Okay, so um, here I am using Camtasia on my Macintosh to record a little video for you about um, how to use ImageJ, which is a Java-based FITS image viewer. It's uh, pretty slick. You can see it here. It's open. It doesn't present much of a user interface at all. Uh, basically, it's just a toolbar, and you can move your mouse over it and see what these different tools do. And uh, there is an extension there, so you can look at different tools that it provides. And also notice that there's one here called Astronomy Tools, which is kind of cool. Those are macros. Um, you have to go to a third-party site to determine uh, where to get those macros, plugins as they call them. And if you look over here in the upper left, you've got a, a menu just for ImageJ, and one of those is plugins, and Astronomy has a whole bunch of goodies that you can, you can plug in there. Um, I happen to have a whole bunch of uh, CCD images here. Um, this happens to be of the Veil Nebula taken during the summer. You literally just grab an image file and you drag it to the bottom bar of image J and it will open that image for you to view. And you can see that there's not a whole lot here to view uh, because the Veil Nebula is pretty faint. One of the most common ones here is to uh, allow you to see what the image shows you instead of just darkness. You go to image menu, adjust brightness and contrast, and at this point you can click auto or uh, whatever and uh, see if it will it will bring you some kind of visibility for you. Um, you'll notice that uh, this image isn't showing us a whole lot at all, which is fine. You know, just is what it is. I'm not going to worry about it. So we'll just exit out of that. Um, the cool thing about ImageJ is that it also lets you look at the header information. Now, FITS files are broken into several parts. The first is a header, and then the rest of the, is the data. The header is literally a flat text file that's kind of stuck on the front of the file altogether and is uh, divided into two parts, keywords and their, and their values. So keywords in, include things like object right ascension and declination, and it gives you values for those. Uh, the image uh, type, is it a, a flat field? Is it a, a, a light image? Is it um, is it a dark frame, that kind of thing, a bias frame. What filter was used? Filter, it'll be UBVRI or H-alpha or sulfur-2 or oxygen-3, typically. Observatory name, observatory latitude and longitude, those are all keywords that you'll find in the header. And to view the header, which I think is something that some of you want to do, you go up to uh, image here in the menu and then just click on show info. And it opens up the header for you. And you can you can expand that and look at that. And here you go. Um, the header contains a, a whole variety of standard fits image uh, pieces: simple bit pics, Naxos, B scale, B zero. The date of observation is an important one. How long the exposure time was, uh, how much it really was, because sometimes there's a reality behind it. The temperature that your CCD was supposed to be operating at the temperature it really was operating at, this is in Celsius, um, whether or not the pixels were binned, um, the filter that was used, in this case hydrogen alpha, it was a light frame as opposed to a dark frame, a bias frame, or a flat field, um, it tells you the object right ascension and declination, it tells you what side the telescope was on concerning the pier, in this case the telescope was on the west side of the pier, sometimes that matters. Um, how much air mass you were looking through. In this case, it was pretty much overhead at 1.08 times the air mass of the Earth. Um, the name of the object here is empty. and It's too bad. It should have said the Veil Nebula or something. The telescope, what the camera was and what observatory took the picture, uh, who owns the software, and that kind of thing. And then sometimes there are other many more complicated things in here. So that's uh, it's kind of like the basics of, of image J. I'm wondering if I might be able to get an image here that you can see that's kind of cool. Um, uh, open up uh, another image here and see if I can get it to show at least something with brightness and contrast. Uh, apparently not so much. Oh well. It is what it is. But that's pretty much it anyway. It's a, it's a good introduction to the application. It can do other things too. It can do photometry. It can do uh, astrometric reduction. It can do UBVR photometry. In other words, you can create uh, HR diagrams and all that kind of stuff using the software. It's pretty complicated and yet uh, not so difficult to learn compared to so many other professional applications.